Hi, this is Arnav. Welcome to the channel. Today we'll be talking about the interesting MakerDAO project. So MakerDAO is trying to solve a problem that many other stable coins in the space are trying to solve, but it is doing that in a very innovative and decentralized way. So in this video, we'll go through the project in brief. We'll talk about their problem statement, their background, and the various type of tokens that they have. So they have two tokens. One is the Maker token and one is the DAI token. Then we'll talk about their technology and how exactly their whole platform works. Then we'll talk about the various players in the ecosystem. We have obviously the users, the smart contracts, the keepers and oracles. Finally, we'll talk about the distribution, how the token is distributed and the team, who is the co-founder CEO, who is the advisors, who are the investors and so on and so forth. So yeah, let's talk about the interesting MakerDAO project today. So MakerDAO plans to keep the value of DAI to one US dollar using external market mechanisms and economic incentives, potentially offering a viable alternative to centralized stable tokens such as Tether. So this is what is their problem statement. Then uh, they have actually the two tokens. We have They have the Maker token and the DAI token. And the name of the project is MakerDAO and the issuer is the DAI Foundation. Like in the if the name of the project is Ethereum, the issuer is the Ethereum Foundation. Then for the token, uh, for the Maker token, it is an ERC20 token, which has a supply of around 600,000 and a maximum supply of 1, 1 million. And if you go to coin market cap, we find the price is approximately 1,000 US dollars and the market cap is around 600 million dollars and it has a ranking of 41 and it is actually a project which has been in the ethereum ecosystem in the ethereum space for quite a lot of time and the price has also followed the recent trends that many other altcoins have followed and similarly for the DAI token we have a supply of maximum supply of 50 million and the current supply is around i think 30 million and it has a market cap of 30 million accordingly because the price is pegged to the dollar and one DAI token equals approximately one US dollars. So this is 0.9933, something like that. So this is equal to approximately one US dollar. Now going to the project background, we find that uh, while we fiat, fiat currencies like the dollar offer relatively low volatility, they are controlled by central parties like Federal Reserve Bank and rely on the health of the local banking system for commercial use. And many users of crypto assets consider user control and minimal volatility to be the holy grail of not just digital currencies, but any currency. And the maker project is seeking to reach this goal through the creation of the DAI token. So for all the crypto people, the major issue right now is like, say, if you want to use crypto for payment, most people are worried, Either both the buyers and sellers are worried about the variation in the price. And especially the person who would use, who is selling something for crypto, he has to constantly think about the price. Should he keep his token? Should he not keep his token? Should he sell it? Right now, he has to think about the why can the market crash? So these are some big, big problems. So having a stable coin is, uh, is the need of the R in the crypto game. So again, this talks about the two types of tokens. We have DAI, which is a collateral backed currency token, uh, whose value is equal to one US dollar, and Maker, which is a smart contract platform built on Ethereum and that backs and stabilizes the value of DAI. So anything can't be, you need something backing a US dollar. So uh, US dollar is backed by the, is the price is maintained by the Federal Reserve. So similarly for DAI, if it's left to itself, itself on supply and demand, then the value would fluctuate. It, it will never be stable. So we need something that backs and always makes it value to be one US dollar. And the maker essentially does that. And the maker allows anyone to leverage their Ethereum digital assets to generate DAI tokens on the maker platform. And once generated, they can the DAI tokens can be used as any other cryptocurrency. So if, if you find a buyer, so say if you are on a platform, if, if someone say taught you something, they taught you programming, then you can pay the other person using the DAI token, like you would do for Bitcoin, Ethereum or, or other cryptocurrencies. So that is the basic overview of the system. Now moving on to the technology aspect of things. So we have the maker token that derives its value from the internet payments 
called uh, from the interest payment sorry called stability fees which are paid by borrowers that create DAI tokens and the maker token also plays the important role as the basis for governance decisions in the network so all this so the there is a concept of interest payments and stability fees which I'll go down and explain later on but uh, that is what is how the value of maker token actually fluctuates and it is obviously not stable and so this this paragraph is a really important paragraph the DAI credit system acts similar to a decentralized lender okay allowing users to lock up collateral in smart contracts and borrow DAI a user that wishes to transact in DAI would send a specific amount of ETH to a contract which creates a collateralized debt position users can withdraw DAI from the contract at any time and similar to a line of credit it is not required to withdraw the entire balance immediately to retrieve collateral, users repay the balance of DAI, which they withdrew along with an interest payment called a stability fee denominated in Maker. So this is how it works. And in, in the next paragraph, they go and throw in some numbers. And after that, I'll give an example of how, whole, how the whole system is working. To hedge against a decline in the price of collateral, users must over collateralize these contracts. Currently, the network requires collateral of greater than 150% of the dollar value of the DAI borrowed, if the value of the collateral falls below 150%, the CDP could be liquidated. This starts an auction process in which the assets of the CDP are sold in order to pay off the outstanding DAI loan balance, stability fees and penalty fees. So basically what happens is like say if, if you want to buy $100 worth of DAI tokens. So currently what you would need to do is you would need to send $150 worth of ETH tokens to their smart contract. So say you need, you would send, I don't know, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 ether to their smart contract and you would get $100 worth of DAI tokens, which you can use. Now say the value of the ETH that you sent dropped instead of increasing from $150 to say $100 then what the contract can do is it can start selling your ETH. It has in order to get it, get its fund back and it, it would need to sell your ETH. So it would sell hundred dollar worth of uh, say, if the price dropped to hundred, it would sell say $50 worth of ETH. Then if it drops furthermore, then it would sell some, some other amount of ETH. So it, it has a program and an algorithm of how to sell the ETH and it would start an auction process. So that is like the basic uh, ecosystem and say if the price doesn't actually drop like say if the value of $150 worth of ETH went to $200 worth of ETH then what would happen is like if you want to withdraw your uh, funds finally you would pay them uh, and say you want to withdraw those funds you can actually get you will get back the remaining $50 worth of ETH. So say if you want, if you would send them the DAI uh, tokens and you, uh, like you, you would send them $100 worth of DAI tokens and you would get your $150 worth of ETH, but some small cut would be taken out. And that is what they call the interest fees or the uh, stability fees. And that would be given in the maker token. And that is the use case for the maker token. Okay. So that is what happens. Like like for any other way in which you are taking a loan, you you pay some amount of interest. And in this case also, you pay some interest in the maker token. Now, holders of maker tokens do play two important roles in the MakerDAO system. First is that they govern the network by voting on which types of collateral can be issued. And second is they act as a backstop in the case that collateral collapses before CDPs can be auctioned. In this extreme event, new maker tokens are created and sold off in order to stabilize the system Maker token holders are incentivized to keep the network strong to uh, avoid diluting their holdings. So basically what it means is like say if you have, um, if, if for the case that I was mentioning, like you put $150 worth of ETH um, in the smart contract, but so the price of ETH drops quite a lot in one day. There was some maybe a hack or some bug in the core Ethereum code. So what would happen is, like say the price of $150, it went to say $20 and at the smart contract, the, it, it, the, so it sold that much amount of ETH, but it suffered a loss of $80. Okay. So that amount of value has to be created by something. It gave away hundred dollar worth of DAI tokens, 
but it retrieved back only $20 worth of value. So it needs to create $80 worth of value somehow. So basically what would happen is in this scenario, the maker tokens would gen get generated and uh, uh, the maker tokens worth of $80 would get generated and they would come into the ecosystem. So that is how the whole system works out. And um, the third, there are actually third party incent participants as well. So now we are moving on to all the players that are in the ecosystem. So we have third party network participants known as keepers that help maintain the price of DAI and keepers are generally automated programs that take advantage of arbitrage opportunities to keep DAI near its peg. And they also participate in CDP auctions, ensuring the orderly wind down of liquidated contracts. So this is the role of the keepers. Then we also have uh, oracles and uh, oracles provide information directly to contracts, which can track the value of collateral, the target rate of for die and enforce liquidation for CDPs. So basically what happens is like, say you want uh, all this price predictions, like how much ETH should be collateralized in order to get hundred dollar worth of die. Someone needs to check out the market. So that is where oracles come in. Oracles is a way for smart contract to communicate with the outside world, uh, outside the whole blockchain ecosystem. And that is where these come in. Yeah, so these are all the players in the ecosystem. Now moving on to the distribution, we have, uh, there are currently 1 million maker tokens which have been discussed and approximately 600,000 of them are in the supply. And an important event was that in December 2017, Maker announced that it had sold 12 million of Maker token to a group on, of investors led by the famous VC firms, uh, Andreessen Horowitz and Polychain Capital. Yeah, so that was one of a major event. And they have certain, they would have certain amount of uh, tokens kept for the maybe foundation and the main team and advisors and so on and so forth. And the max supply of DAI is 50 million, which has been discussed before as well. So this is like the whole overview of the project in the technical aspect of things and in the marketing and token aspect of things and the problem that they are trying to solve. So moving on to the team, we find the, C the CEO and project lead is Rune Christensen, who has been in the space for quite a lot of time. And he has been working on the MakerDAO project for approximately three years and three months. And previously he was co-founder of Tri China, and he did his uh, biochemistry degree from Copenhagen's University, which is I think mostly in Denmark. And he did his MBA uh, from Copenhagen Business School. So he doesn't have a lot of work experience, but I think his LinkedIn isn't that updated. And uh, the, uh, what, moving on to the website, the website talks more about how their project works. I'll link that down below. You should definitely check that out. And they talk about their uh, team as well. So if we go to the team, we find that all, who are all the players, you can have a look at them, check out the LinkedIn profiles. If you find them that, if you want to check that, are they proficient enough? And you can look at their white paper. They have a purple paper, which is a more theoretical and technical paper and have a look at how their platform works. Now moving on to the advisors, they are backed by Polychain Capital, which is like one of the best VC firms, crypto hedge funds, sorry. And uh, one confirmation, which is crypto fund backed by Peter Thiel, Mark Anderson and Mark Cuban, big, big names out there. And L4 Ventures, which is I think uh, closely associated with the Ethereum Foundation and trying to solve the scalability problem. So again, they, they have quite an amazing set of advisors. And even in the investor side of things, they are backed by one confirmation, Polychain Capital, Andreessen Horowitz, FBG Capital, which I think uh, Vitalik was a partner there, but now has left. Then Scanet, Distributed Capital pa Partners, all big, big names in the space. So this is all regarding their project. You can check up uh, all these resources, their GitHub, their Twitter, through their website. And uh, I'll link all the relevant links below. And if you have any doubt regarding the project and if you want to understand something, you can ask me in the comments down below or you can join our Telegram community. I'm quite active there. Yeah, uh, this is all regarding the project. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future videos in Bitcoin, blockchain, cryptocurrencies and so on and so forth. Okay, bye-bye.